Now let us see a C program to implement SAF schedule. First we have stdio.h. Next we know that uh, execution of a C program always starts from main function. Uh, here the variables are of type int. N means number of processes. BT means burst to time uh, for total maximum of 10 processes. WT means waiting time. TAT means turnaround time. CT means completion time. And here P means processes. According to the burst to time, we have to do the sorting. Uh, so while doing the sorting based on the burst to time, we have to do the process number sorting also. Uh, so that's why we have taken the process number. So P of 10 means processes. So sum, uh, in order to calculate the completion time, we have taken sum for loop repetition IJK variables for swapping temp variable. Next, we have to calculate the average turnaround time as well as average waiting time. But we know that in C language, int by int means int only. So that's why we have taken total uh, total waiting time as well as total TAT, total turnaround time as the floating point value. So float by integer means in C float. The initial values are zero here. Next, first the input is print of entered the total number of processes. So L is the variable. Next input is process number. Enter the process number. So here the process number starts from 0. So let we have 5 processes. Then the process numbers are from 0 to 4. P0, P1, P2 likewise. Next here the input is burst to time. So print of enter the process burst time. Next here for i equal to 0, i less than n, i plus plus. n represents number of processes. Print of enter burst to time of process percentage d. What is percentage d? i plus 1. So in the first iteration, we will get that output as burst to time of process of 1, next to process of 2, process of 3 likewise. So scan of percentage D comma M percent BT of 5. So BT means burst to time. Next, here what we are doing is we are applying the bubble sort to sort according to the burst to time and process number. Here we know about SAF. So first let's see the problem here. SAF problem. So here we have the problem. Uh, let me have four processes and the burst to times are 6, 8, 7 and 3 are the burst to times. SAF means shortest job first schedule. So the job which is having shortest burst to time will be executed first. Out of 6, 8, out of 6, 8, 7 and 3. So 3 is the smaller value. So first P4 process will be executed. So 0. What is the P4 burst to time? 3. So 0 plus 3 means 3. So P4 completion time is 3. Next out of 6, 8, 7. Which is the smaller value? 6. So next to CP will execute P1. Here P1 arrival time is 3. Whereas what is P1 burst time? 6. So 3 plus 6 means 9. Next smaller value is P3. So 9 plus 7 means 16. 7 is the burst time. Next one is 8. So here P2 arrival time is 60. Burst time is 8. So 6 plus 8 means 24. So here we need to have uh, that sorted order. In order to perform the sorting, we are using our simple sorting technique that is bubble sort. Bubble sort. Here what we are doing is, here uh, we are sorting like this. So first one is 3. So what is the next number? Next number is 6 next number is next number is 7 and next number is 8 here while doing the sorting we are sorting the process numbers also here this 3 is nothing but which process it is p4 so this is nothing but p4 process so we have to do that uh, sorting also next this 6 is nothing but which process 1 next this 7 is nothing but which process? Third process. Next, this 8 is nothing but second process. So here, based upon the 
batch to time here we are doing the sorting but for the process number simply we have to write that batch to time process here 3 is nothing but batch time of p4 so here we have to write 4 likewise so first p4 will be executed next p1 next to p3 next to p2 likewise the processes will get executed so this is nothing but our bubble sort logic if you are not familiar with bubble sort already a video is uploaded in my channel on bubble sort i will share that video link in the description as well as comment please go through that video so if you see here here the outermost for loop it specifies how many iterations are needed how many iterations are needed if there are n elements then n minus 1 iterations are enough so that's why here we have written i less than n or we can write as i less than or equal to n minus 1 i less than n or i less than or equal to n minus 1 if there are five elements then if we sort four elements then automatically fifth element will be proper order only okay next this is nothing but innermost for loop in the innermost for loop the condition is j less than n minus i minus 1 Next year we have to compare the bars two times. Bars two times. If BT of J, what is BT of J? Bars two time of zeroth process is greater than bars two time of one process. If it is greater than, if that condition is true, then it specifies that they are not in ascending order. So let us do the let us do for one element. Here what is BT of zero? Three. What is BT of one? 6 3 greater than 6 condition is true or false here if you observe here 3 greater than 6 you bt of j greater than bt of j plus 1 3 greater than 6 yes condition is false that means already these two elements are in ascending order so there is no need to do the swapping next elements next what will happen j plus plus next what will happen here we have j plus plus j plus plus so J plus plus means J will become 1. So now BT of 1 will be compared with BT of 2. What is BT of 1? 6. 6 will be compared with 4. 6, 4. They are not in ascending order. So we have to do the swapping. In place of 6 we will get 4. In place of 4 we will get 6. Next elements are 5 and 2. Next elements are. There is no change. 5 and 2. Next to what will happen? J will become 1. Uh, Previously j is 1, now j will become 2. Now 6 will be compared with 5. b2 of 2 will be compared with b2 of 3. 6 is greater than 5. Yes, condition is true. That means these two elements are not in ascending order. So we have to do the swapping. So in place of 6, 5. In place of 5, 6. Next to 6 will be compared with 2. They are not in ascending order. So in place of 6 we will get 2. In place of 2 we will get 6. In place of 2, we will get 6. So after the first iteration, we will get the output like this. Likewise, we will need 4 more iterations. So here we are doing the swapping. So likewise, here what we are doing, we know about how to swap 2 numbers using temporary variable. Temp equal to A, A equal to B, B equal to temp. Here A means BT of J, B means BT of J plus 1. So temp equal to BT of J, BT of J equal to BT of J plus 1 bt of j plus 1 equal to temp. So likewise we have to swap the process numbers also. Simply uh, in place of bt of j we have to write p of j. So temp equal to p of j. p of j equal to p of j plus 1. p of j plus 1 equal to temp. So now what will happen? So correspondingly the process numbers will also be swapped. Here 3 means which process? 0th process. So here we will get p0. Next to 4 means which process? P2 process. So here we will get 2. 5 means which process? 3. Here we will get 3. Next to 2 means which process? 2 means P4 process. Here we will get 4. 6. 6 means 1. So here we have to sort based upon the bars to type. So here what we are doing? In according to the bars type, we have to write the process numbers. Here 3 means bars to type. 3 means it is P0 process. Next, 4 means it is 4. Yeah, 4 means it is which process? Second process. Next, 5 means it is third process. 2 means fourth process. So, 6 means first process. 
So likewise here we are doing the sorting. So after sorting what will happen? Uh, we will get the output in the sorted order like uh, after all the iterations we will get like this output. What is the output? So 2, what is the smaller value out of 3, 6, 4, 5, 2. So 2 after that, 3 after that, 4 after that, 5 after that, 6. So that is the output. So if you have any doubts on bubble sir, so refer the description or uh, comment. Next, let us see the logic. Let us see the logic. Calculate the completion time of the processes. Here we are calculating the completion time. So in order to calculate the completion time, here we are taking a variable called sum. The initial value of the sum is 0. So 0 should be added to the first time of the first process. Likewise, likewise, if you see the logic for j equal to 0, j less than n, j plus plus. Yeah, we have to add the burst to time to the sum. So, bt of j plus sum equal to sum. Next, the sum should be placed in that completion time here. Completion time here. So, ct of 0. Next, to ct of 1. Likewise, here while displaying or while calculation, the value will always start from 0. Okay, if you see here, if you see the logic here, the initial value of the sum is 0. The initial value of the sum is 0. Next, for j equal to 0, j less than n, j plus plus. Sum equal to sum plus bt of 0. Be here, bt of 0 means this process. So, 0 plus 3 means 3. So, that 3 is nothing but completion time of, this 3 is nothing but burst time of P4 process. So, P4 process completion time is 3. So, the, 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 the tree we have to write here. Okay. Next, J plus plus. J will become now 1. So, now what is uh, some value? Now, what is some value? 3. That 3 should be placed in completion time here. Right? So, now CT of 0 is 3. Next, J will become 1. So, what is BT of 1? BT of 1 means this process. After 3, we have this 0. So, what is this value? 6. That 6 will be added to 3. 3 plus 6 means 9. So, likewise, we have to calculate the completion time. After calculating the result, we have to store that result in that completion time here. Right? That completion time here. Right? So, if you see here, what is P4 completion time? 3. What is P1 completion time? 9. P3 completion time? 16. P2 completion time? 24. Next, we have to calculate the turnaround time. The formula for the turnaround time is it is completion time only. Here arrival time is not given. If your arrival time is given, then turnaround time formula is completion time minus arrival time. But here the uh, arrival time is not given. So there is no difference between turnaround time and completion time. Both are same only. So average turnaround time is what is P1 turner? What is P1 completion time? 9. 9 plus. What is P2 completion time? 24. 24 plus. What is P3 completion time? 16 plus, what is P4 completion time? 3 by, we have to add 4. Likewise, what is average waiting time? If you see here, P1 average waiting time is 3, P2 average waiting time is 16, P3 averaging time is 9, P4 average waiting time is 0 by, total number of processes are 4. So, here average waiting time is 7, the average turnaround time is 13. So, if you see the logic here, Calculate the turnaround time for k equal to 0, k less than n, k plus plus. For loop repetition, we are using k. Here, there is no difference between completion time and turnaround time. So, here was, we are storing completion time in turnaround time here. Right? So, next, uh, calculate the total turnaround time. What is the initial value of total DAT? 0. So, that equal to 0 plus. So, what we are doing? Simply, we are adding total the turnaround time. Next, uh, what is the formula for waiting time? Here k is nothing but uh, loop repetition variable. Waiting time equal to ten, turn around time minus burst to time. Waiting time equal to turn around time minus burst time. That is the formula. Next total waiting time equal to, we have to add that uh, waiting time uh, value to the corresponding total WT variable. Next to display the result. So process, BT stands for burst to time. TAT stands for turn around time. WT stands for waiting time. Here P, what is Percentage D means that process number. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, likewise. Here, while displaying, we will display from 1 only. 
okay we will display from one only we can't display like p4 p3 if you take the previous example actually the 2 is nothing but uh, it is not the first process it is uh, second process or third process which process it is here this 3 is nothing but p4 process first time but we can't display like p4 it is very very difficult like uh, it is difficult to write like that so here percentage d means i plus 1 what is second percentage d first time what is third percentage d third percentage d is first two percentage d is uh, that process number second percentage d is burst to time third percentage d is turn around time fourth percentage d is uh, that waiting time so this last one is not necessary so here we need only how many values one two three four only so one two three four this is also not necessary so only four values one two three four use uh, one more slash next to display yeah calculate average standard on time as well as average waiting time so total d a d by n total uh, w t by n okay i will share the this program also in the comment so please go through the comment here in the comments it is not possible to display less than greater than symbol those angle brackets are not possible to display so in place of less than greater than i will write l e s s t h a n likewise so let us run the program already we have a program so let's check whether our program is correct or not okay here the number of processes are four processes and the process numbers are 0 1 2 3 and the burst to times are 6 8 7 3 so already we have calculated the results if you see here 3 plus 16 means 19 19 plus 9 means 28 28 by 4 means 7 if you see here what is the average waiting time 7 and what is total tender on time 9 plus 24 means 33 33 plus 16 means 49 14 plus 3 means 52 52 by 4 is nothing but 30 so if you see here this is the output so average uh, tender on time is 30 average waiting time is 7 so this is about uh, SAF uh, uh,